What's up guys? Welcome back to Newswave. What a weekend. It's it's seriously for me it's been a long weekend. Um but I'm glad to be back on Monday. It's awesome. I did manage to pick up this awesome Mario shirt though over the weekend. So that was a plus. Other than that, it's been a couple of long nights with uh Logan crying himself to sleep every night because he's uh he's having some issues we think with his teething, but otherwise it's been pretty good. So let's um you know what? Let's just jump into some interesting news here because we may have one more step to getting that Switch hacked. And you know what, I'm just gonna start with that. The Nintendo Switch had what's called the kernel dump, which is the OS kernel, essentially. And a lot of people were asking me on Twitter, uh, pretty much everywhere, what what is a what is the kernel and why is it a big deal? Um, no, we're not talking about like the KFC kernel or like popcorn kernels, which actually a popcorn kernel could be used as a pretty good analogy for what this is. No, the kernel is pretty much the the center of the operating system for the most part. It tells basically the operating system how to work with your CPU, the uh, the I/O ports, um, your RAM. Everything runs through the kernel. It's almost like if you could look at it like a nucleus almost, and then you have things like like uh, your desktop overlaid on top of it, applications you install, but the kernel is responsible for basically the inner workings of your operating system. It is very important. And now some people have apparently dumped the entire kernel uh, for the operating system on the Switch, which is pretty interesting because that means we may be getting closer to a fully unlocked Switch. Now there's a couple users right now that are attempting to uh, essentially crack and then load unsigned code onto the Switch. The biggest one right now who has announced this thing simply, this is Derek on Twitter saying simply, we got the kernel, Nintendo Switch, and then hashtag hacks. Now, yes, that's great, you have the kernel, but a lot of people, like if you go over to some of the, the forums that deal with uh, modification of code specifically for game consoles, I don't, wanna, I don't like calling them hackers, I guess you could call them hackers, they're more, uh, I guess you'd say, software modifiers, or in, in their case, uh, this person here, Derek, is a vulnerability researcher. And that's a very interesting thing to think about here while we go forward in this conversation. So yes, we have basically the, the, the innermost workings of the operating system. And, and this is important because when you dump and you have the entire kernel, you can start to look for vulnerabilities and ways you can exploit the system to run unsigned code. Sometimes people will do things like stack overflows or inject dummy code that they see kind of how it functions with that kernel and then maybe they can slip in an address line that then sends that to say your code that you're trying to run that will let you run something like uh, like a bootloader or in their case custom firmware and a lot of people are concerned because what happens now does the Nintendo Switch get hacked well it might uh, it, it might um, but we have to also remember that not every kernel is completely exploitable sometimes you just don't find an exploit for it people are still waiting for uh, PS4 modifications to be released and that system's been out for a while and it runs on a similar operating system free BSD for the Switch as well, so who knows? I mean, the kernel could be dumped and then they just have a hard time finding any kind of vulnerabilities. And even if they do, you pretty much cannot accept any security updates going forward for the Switch or stability updates as they like to disguise them uh, because they'll close up those security holes. And really Nintendo has done something smart here early on that people we, we saw in the news for like a couple days, we were like, oh, that's cool. I don't know if they'll ever need it. Well. Now, Derek can kind of sit there, and if he does find vulnerabilities, he has to try to figure out, is it worth releasing this vulnerability, this exploit, or do I go over to Nintendo and say, look what I found, why don't you give me some of that hacking money you have to decide? Yes, yeah, so you remember how we talked about that, where Nintendo was basically putting bounties out for, hey, if you find vulnerabilities or exploits in our systems, whether it's the 3DS, the Switch, whatever, we'll pay you money, up to $20,000, and if his findings are big enough to where the Switch could be completely unlocked and we're loading free games, Nintendo's gonna patch it anyway in the first place, so maybe he goes, ooh, maybe I'll get paid for this instead of releasing it to the public, I'll just go to Nintendo and get money. Now, I don't know Derek personally, uh, so I, I don't know if he would do that, it's up to him. He does, uh, he is kind of known for SIG hacks on the 3DS, of course that was before Nintendo started offering a bounty program, so it's possible that, uh, that maybe he does get the money, or maybe he doesn't, maybe he's more about, well, I'll put it out there and let people use this Switch as a, as extremely powerful, 
uh, portable handheld homebrew device. But for the people asking for timetables for this, not for a while. He has to find the exploit, which means he has to dig through and test several types of coding. It's trial and error, guys. So he's going to be doing it for quite a while. Even if this was his only thing, which is probably more of a hobby for him, uh, it would still take quite a while. It's it's something that just takes time. It's it, seriously, it's tedious. It's just a lot of work to try to figure that out. And even then, then he has to figure out how to load custom firmware. Got to design custom firmware, and then you, th maybe a bootloader. There's a lot of stuff you have to go through. So even though we have the kernel dumped. We're still possibly, I'm not even kidding, years away even. Maybe even a full, uh, okay, maybe I won't say years, but we're definitely like a year at least away from this being like you get it on an SD card, you put it in, you hit a button, and it, and it mods it, much like how the PSP does now. Um, it's going to be quite a while for that. Next up, if you're a fan of the Castlevania series that happened on Netflix, which a lot of people have been. There were only four episodes, though, and while I haven't watched them yet because I've been pretty busy, I did talk to Max, Dreamcast guy, and he did film me in because he does a lot of reviews, that it was really good overall. The animation was good, the story was good, it was just the pacing's really good. And it, it's probably a little easier to ingest four episodes that just dropped because they weren't long. Basically, you can get through it in probably shorter than what some of the feature-length films are now in theaters. But it was so good, Netflix has now announced eight more episodes on the way in what I can only assume, as most other people are assuming, is a season two. And this is wonderful for a couple reasons. The biggest one being, generally, video game adaptations into uh, TV shows or film generally are not good, as we have seen. It's, it's one of the jokes about the film industry is usually if a video game is being adapted to it, it's going to be bad, right? We've seen it so many times. But in this case, Adi Shankar might have done a great job to the point where he's getting eight more. And of course, I have to say Netflix's strategy where they post all of the episodes all at once and you just watch them is great. I like that strategy a lot. I think it does help with some of these series because you don't have to wait, you know, weeks for, for something to show up. I'm very happy that Castlevania has worked out so far. I will be watching them probably tomorrow when I have some free time, but uh, I'm very excited to see it because it's, I, I'm glad to see a video game, uh, a video game adaptation that Netflix is mainstream now will be in front of a lot of people. This could be really good for the Castlevania franchise in general. Maybe start seeing other ones too. Next cyber gadget is trying to solve the problem that we all have right now. And that of course is how do I hold my keyboard and my joy cons when playing the Nintendo to switch at the same time. Now this is their new accessory that's coming out. It is a keyboard that also has a slot on either side for the Joy-Cons to slide in. It does not charge the Joy-Cons, but it allows you to hold the keyboard and the Joy-Cons at the same time. No doubt this is definitely for, uh, say, Dragon Quest X, for example, on the Switch, where you'll be doing more typing at times than if you definitely want to go into menu, is what I'm trying to say, and try to pick out the, the letters and type it out. You definitely want a keyboard. And I guess they were thinking, well, people have to put down the controller, pick up the keyboard, type it, put the keyboard back down. Let's just give them everything right there, and then if they need to, they can put it down their lap, type it, and then just pick it right back up. And this is not new. There was one for the GameCube a while back too, which you're seeing a picture of here now, which is kind of hilarious to look at now. Uh, at least the Joy-Cons slide in and you don't have to walk around with what looks like a, a massive monstrosity of a GameCube controller. Um, no word on when this is coming out yet, but at least it's, I guess it's just another accessory if you want a keyboard that you can slide your Joy-Cons into. We're still waiting for any kind of MMO over here in the West. I don't know if we'll see Dragon Quest X, but at least there's an accessory for it. And in our last bit of news, this is pretty cool. Um, it's, it's definitely kind of, I guess it was emotional for some of the people there and the people voting, but we did have summer games done quick. Uh, done this past weekend, and it was pretty cool. It's, it, really, they get together, speedrunners do. They run through games, and all of the money that gets donated goes to charity, which which is a great it's a great idea. Why not? And overall, they speed run tons of games. You can always watch it on stream for free. And then, of course, you can donate either to participate or just to give to charity. And in this case, they decided to speed run Earthbound. And of course, most of us have played Earthbound. You name your characters, you name what your favorite food is, your favorite item, and then you go through the story. And different times in Earthbound, you can actually change your character's name. And what they did was they set up an entire poll so that you could name every uh, character, what, what they enjoyed to eat, you know, like I said, all, all that stuff. And what they did was they would, they would spend money in a bidding war type thing so that they would kind of put money in each category. And they ended up with an interesting name at the beginning and then a really cool name at the end. So the first name they went with, which is pretty funny, it was simply Reggie 
Give Us Mother 3. That was the name initially that was winning the polls. And they went through a good bit of the story until they get to a certain point where people start rallying behind a certain name that was, that was at the bottom. And I, I bet you right now, if you kind of stop and think about the name I'm about to say, uh, you're going to be pretty happy that it won. That, of course, at the bottom was Iwata. This is the final chart for what everyone was named at the end. You're going to see some big numbers, and that's because a lot of people were, were pulling money. It's not like one person donated $20,000. It was like, you know, a 10, a 15, a 20, a 5, and it all pulled up. But right at the bottom, Awada ended up passing uh, the Reggie Give Us Mother 3 kind of joke um, at $21,230. And at the end, they finished and beat Earthbound with Awada's name intact right there for the player. It was pretty cool. Um, like I said, a lot of people rallied behind that name. Of course, when they see that, they know his connection to Earthbound. He oversaw the Earthbound and the Kirby series heavily. And it, it was fitting. I know it might be a small thing to some people, but to see that, uh, there were a lot of people who were the chat who seemed to be really behind it. Um, some of the people there were like, wow, this is really cool. It's kind of touching. And uh, to finish the game like that, uh, with his name right there when it's scrolling down and you, and you see his name and then you see his name as the player and everybody who was watching the stream really got behind it. They came together. They weren't like, well, we'll just do this meme, you know, to be really funny. No, they kind of put that aside. Uh, the internet tends to be like that at times. This was just a really cool example of the internet kind of coming together, realizing that, hey, this is this is a, a kind of a feel-good story thing we can do, even though it's just a name on like a, on a on a video game screen, it's still really cool to see. And that's it for Newswave today, guys. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let me think about any of the stuff we talked about today. Whether it is the Switch kernel being dumped, and is that going to lead to anything bigger for the Switch? A lot of people are worried. Well, if they hack it, you know, there won't be any third parties coming along. Well, I mean, really, they'll just keep updating the Switch. You'd have to turn off your online completely to do that and then who knows maybe some of the games that come out are, are in need of the newer firmware which means they have to keep up with the firmware it might turn into more hassle than it's worth for a lot of people on the other side people are like wow great we could run some really cool homebrew games on there that can really take advantage of that tegra maybe we can overclock the system there's a lot of interesting stuff there so that's really the big topic i am just really curious about also let me know if you saw castlevania Please do not spoil anything in the comments for other people. It's kind of rude. I, I don't want to delete any comments or put them as spam. So, you know, you can say how you felt about it. Just don't, don't ruin it for the next person. That's it for now, guys. I'll see you next time.